Hey, we're back. It's the Tabletop Standard, episode 9. Yes. <laughs> I haven't been keeping track. I so. have, sort of. <laughs> uh, so, hey, uh, we've gone from dragons to uh, space knights. So, um, Ang- Angry buff dudes. Yeah. <laughs> Fancy man with cape. <laughs> so uh, I've got my Primaris Lieutenant with the Neo Volkite pistol and the Storm Shield uh, from the Indominus box. And Jeff has the uh, Chaplain, Primaris Chaplain from the Indominus box also. Now it's worth noting that I already have a, a Chaplain that I like to use for my uh, Space Marine, so I don't really give a squirt what happens to that guy. <laughs> cool. So have fun. I'm going to use the, the color I paint the dragon eyes with as a base coat. <laughs> All right. <laughs> why not? Uh, and since this is actually going in my Black Templar army, I'm going to do some Black Templar ar- armor on it in my preferred com- color scheme. This will be a very abstract colored guy. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> why not? <laughs> well, I mean, and, and the thing is that Space Marines are kind of stayed, so let's see some, let's see some wacky nonsense. Oh, the wackiest. <laughs> Is that wacky tobacco? The wackiest? Simpsons reference. <laughs> I get them sometimes. Wacky tobacco. <laughs> Tamako. 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 So people watching this particular episode are going to be very much by the end be like or while i'm doing it actually probably gonna be like what is he doing why is he doing that stop oh my god please stop why? stop no <laughs> <laughs> so why are you doing that uh, just to be different uh, freaking because the world is a carousel of colors darn it <laughs> i've also been reading a modern art one of my modern art books recently and go on <laughs> i'm just gonna and I'm at the point where uh, people started being really abstract with uh, how they see the world. And it's like, oh, yeah, we're, we're going to use a variety of weird and strange colors to represent things. I see. Because why not? <laughs> Where's that hot box? Kind of uh, the way you've done him up now makes him kind of look like a force ghost. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to I'm I'm going from turquoise yellow or turquoise blue to like a very stark like big bird yellow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you may want to wait a couple of moments for yeah. that to paint for that paint to dry. I'll explain a little bit more why I'm doing this. Is you're a madman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm going to talk to you about modern art for a little bit. All right. This Leon, book I have. Leon McDuff, let's hear it. <laughs> um, modern art kind of started when uh, people reached what they thought was the height of um, academic painting, which is like superb realism and superb um, representation of art uh-huh. and standard right at that sort of like perfect proportions really knowing the human body really knowing perspective really knowing color and people uh newer artists at that point um they kind of thought that hey this kind of sucks we have no <laughs> nowhere else to go with this mm. since everything's already been mastered so far so where do we go you know yeah so you have these guys like the Impressionists who started going in a wildly unique direction. People like, uh, I'm not sure if I would call Van Gogh an Impressionist per se. He's like a post-Impressionist. But people like Van Gogh, Monet, mm-hmm. Manet, and all these who started looking at uh, the world not as how great we could represent this, but how we can represent this in an emotional capacity mm-hmm. through art. And it wasn't, it, it became less about what was, what you saw, and more about also how it made you feel. Mm. And that's how you get stuff like pointillism and uh, stuff like Monet's Water Lilies, where everything looks a little bit blurry, let's uh-huh. say, 
and Van Gogh stuff that looks widely different than what you normally think, like Starry Night, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Like, this guy doesn't actually look like that, but that's, like, a, a representation of, like, motion and mm -hmm. and color in motion and stuff like that. Okay. And, and contrasting colors. And from there, you started getting people who wanted to go way more abstract with things. Mm -hmm. um, like, using very different in colors to represent like different planes and angles of say the body like you'd use like a purple a purplish like skin tone here mm -hmm. but on the other side you use like a greenish skin tone to represent two planes and then mm -hmm. you got into some really really abstract stuff with uh kandinsky who was just like no we're just going to use pure color and lines and and it's supposed to represent an emotional capacity for like uh, what you're experiencing through different mm -hmm. means while you're painting. <laughs> and, Can I get a dark red out of there? Dark red, dark red, dark or red. Just give me... Dark red. <laughs> that's a dark red. Yeah. Dark red. <laughs> Carry on. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of done with that, the explanation for now. It's uh -huh. very... Because I'm not explaining it very well, but... I don't know. I'm tracking it. I'm picking up what you're throwing down. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, th there's obviously more to it than just, let's just be abstract and emotional with our colors. But, like, that's right. kind of the where people were going. Um, mm -hmm. And that's where you land on some stuff like uh, what Picasso did later on. Yeah. You know? Or, uh, I don't know. I, I kind of overshadowed primitivism for a very good reason. Is this primitive? No. You just don't like it? It's pretty racist. Oh, <laughs> also. Okay. <laughs> I don't really want to get into why some of the world's great artists in that time were super racist. <laughs> uh -huh. So noted. But um, that was also kind of a big influence on... Uh, yeah abstracting color and so was ukiyo-e uh for those of you who are not familiar with what ukiyo-e is it's a japanese woodblock print of a specific there's very specific uh set of motions that come in with ukiyo-e style work um it's a oh sort of kabuki theater looking thing uh yeah but, like that's what i think that's what our our audience will most readily recognize you've probably just, just, seen it just put up a picture of the wave here yeah there you go um but i'm, I'm talking specifically yeah. for human figures oh for human figures yeah yeah it, kabuki was a very great form of uh mm. that type of artwork <laughs> mm. um yeah People used kabuki actors as a subject quite often. So you're used to holding a pose for a very long time. <laughs> um, but yeah, so how does that? So so this uh, very abstract uh, emotional art. At what point did? And this might be my personal read on on modern art. At what point did it start becoming about less about emotions and more about the the process? Or am I thinking that's postmodern? I mean, that's pretty much the same time. Okay, because I'm thinking I'm thinking specifically of um, oh, Pollock. Pollock, thank yeah. you. Yeah, he's technically a postmodern artist. Okay. <laughs> okay. But I, I mean, still, it's still like. Well, I guess being about the process, mm -hmm. I get it could kind of say it started in modern art because there are certain um, mm -hmm. uh, movements in modern art that were about the process, mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't like the at the forefront of that. Right. Okay. Thinking. Uh, I don't know much about postmodern art, honestly, but I do know it became much stranger then, and that was like around 1940, mm -hmm. well, no, not, not 
I was going to say, yeah, it was, it was post-war in the 50s yeah. and stuff, so. Um, so, yeah. That was, that was that. <laughs> we know things. Sometimes. <laughs> we claim to know things. It's my specialty. I drink and know things. I drink and know things. <laughs> So my, my understanding of our history is um, flawed at best. <laughs> uh, however, Jeff has a degree in that, and I have a degree in regular history, so we're, we're kind of on the... We're at least picking up what each other's throwing down most yeah, of the time. most of the time. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I've gone real basic with my Templar here. Um, yep, he's black. Yep, he's red. He's going to have some gold on his chest. Um, and on his pauldrons and whatnot, because that's how I do them. It's kind super of com- hot. Sorry. Super <laughs> hot. <laughs> it's kind of comforting to have a very like staid and very simple color scheme to go back to all the time, because you know you get to the point where you're just like, ah, what am I doing? Oh, right. The thing that I know how to do that I've been doing for, you know, dozens upon dozens or maybe even hundreds of models. Like, oh, right. I am I am intimately familiar with the way this color scheme works, with the way that these colors mesh. Uh, and I don't have to reinvent the wheel every friggin' time I want to do a model. Which is the exact opposite of what I'm doing today. Yeah, reinventing the friggin' wheel. <laughs> I'm not reinventing it, just, just paying homage to another invention. <laughs> paying, paying homage to somebody else's wheel. Got it. <laughs> bubble gum, bubble gum, hey, bubble, 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 bubble gum. Boom, boom, boom. So, I'm now putting pink, a very hot pink on this model, Uh along with the yellow and blue. (laughs) So my people go, uh? (laughs) Alright, so I'm demonstrating my technique here for um, dealing with eyes uh and eye lenses in that i just kind of like i jab it in there as close as i can and then i wipe away the excess paint off with my thumb and sometimes it takes paint with it but that's okay because it gets it mostly where it's supposed to go uh and for those of you who are wondering i'm using uh was red uh flesh terrors red and word bearers red as the reds on this particular uh, Space Marine. Yep. That's something else, bud. It is something else. What what emotions are supposed to be being represented here? I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying, and I'm not doing a very good job, mm-hmm. but I'm trying to use different colors to represent different planes. I see. With, like, say, the pink would... Not only represent the like the flesh color, but some of the like um, mm-hmm. shadow area, while the yellow is supposed to get some of the highlight area. I see. It's not working out as well as I would hope, because the yellow is kind of becoming green. <laughs> yeah, the problem with um, yellow pigment, at least for these models, is that they kind of melt. It's not a good. None of their yellows are worth a damn, in my opinion. What are you looking for? Uh, can you pass me green? Uh, which green? I don't care. Okay, here's Lauren Forest. Do you want something brighter? Yeah. I, I mean, I've got a super... This will work. Moot green if you want it. That's not moot at all! That's not moot at all! What do you mean? Well, well, well when you say it's a moot green, it usually... Usually, <laughs> it says it's like a... 
More of a not bright green. No, no, no. It's moot green, not muted green. No, no, moot. When something is mooted, it means there's like... Never mind. I, I'm using Lauren Forest. Okay. And the word you're looking for is muted. Yeah. Kind of trying to do an abstract looking mf -er here. Spoose Marine. Yes. Um. Yeah. <laughs> no, last night I was actually... There's this painting by Henry Matisse that... Mm -hmm. It was kind of cool. It was... I can't remember the name of it. But it, it was like news at a beach. Mm. But like it was all done with like very bright and bold like reds, greens, pinks, blues, and yellows. And... Mm -hmm. And I guess skin colors too, but uh, I mean the the, the thrust, of, the main thrust of what you're getting at here is that Henry Matisse, you are not, not yet at least. <laughs> <laughs> well, not not when paying miniatures, that's for damn sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 There, there's a huge experimentation of color during that mm -hmm. that time period of modern art. Hmm. With phobism and all that jazz. So. No, jazz was earlier. Stab! <laughs> <laughs> How much force do I need you to get through your glasses? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so here's, here's my tribute to phobism and Warhammer. That's a sentence you'll never hear again. <laughs> <laughs> the Codex Astartes does not support this action. This guy actually uh -huh. looks like he just fell in a humongous vat of Superman ice cream. He really does. I didn't want to say anything while you were working on it, but I was just like, uh, I could go for some Superman right now. <laughs> Time to stop at the store on the way home! Yep, 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 yep. So if you are interested in seeing some of those bright abstract colors and paintings... If Jeff will send artist. me send me the pictures so I can put them up on the screen right now. Uh, Whoa, he just gonna uh, tell you to like look at like mm -hmm. Kandinsky and Van Gogh and uh, Der. Uh, can't think of the the name of the group. It's called the Blue Riders, but I don't know the actual German name up for it. Der, das, das der, Blue and Ridens. <laughs> der, der Blue and Der Blue. Uh, Der Splugen Bergen Bergen. No, wait, that's Swedish. My bad. <laughs> that's Muppet Swedish. Chicken Herbert Erga Burner. Oh, give me the turkey smirky. Kind of. Again, trying to do this with just the tools that I have right here is a little mm. bit difficult, but you would be kind of cool just to leave some of the, like the pure white on the shield. It might be all right, yeah. Or leave the white, but like do the skull like a mm -hmm. like a metallic or something. Yeah, a different metallic than the gold. Yeah, actually, it might be all yeah. Right. I got to do a lot of detail work to get this thing. Good. That's but that's the fun thing about some yeah. of those neutral colors is like. Mm -hmm. If you have an unpainted white, it kind of fits right in sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes sometimes it's okay to leave some of your base coat showing if your scheme can incorporate it. I know some people are out there are like, Urgh! right now, now that I've said that, but like, it's all really gets Yeah, it gets Pretentious tough. people out there for base coats. Yeah, there's a lot of old ground yards about stupid bull crap like that <laughs> i guess that's fair there are a lot of people out there who are like if you don't have every single mucking inch of your model i mean i don't agree with it but wrong. that's that's a fair notion i guess yeah well i mean and it's coming from uh, an older generation a time of <sighs> gatekeepers and Yay, gatekeeping. Yeah, stop Sucks. it. Yeah. yeah, stop it. Don't do that. Yeah, no, like, it's interesting, too, because I've been finding out on the sister site, the Board Game Rundown. Yeah. Um, 
a lot of people don't like uh i don't know if you can see it's in frame but munchkin up there uh-huh because they don't just like how it plays i guess i don't i don't get <laughs> I, what's, what's wrong with it i mean i like munchkin just fine yeah <laughs> Uh, I think it's probably because it's it's taking stabs at people who play D and D wrong. <laughs> mm, might be. Yeah. And by playing and there might D&D... be there might be also a thing too with mm. with rules and how vague they are. But I mean, that's kind of also the point of the game. So yeah. again, I don't really. I don't or maybe they just don't like Steve Jackson games. That's, that's also fair very too. possible. <laughs> I don't know what. The, <laughs> I don't. I can't I don't tell people. I can't tell people what to do. I'm not their dad yet. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> Are you my daddy? Not yet, I'm not. <laughs> uh, well, that's it for me. Yeah, go, go back to your go back to your hole. <laughs> go, back, go back to where you live. Yeah, if you say so. <laughs> <laughs> Superman ice cream guy here. Yeah. And again, uh, this guy, this guy's gonna need some work. I'm gonna. All right, so here's here's the breakdown of what I'm going to do to this primaris lieutenant. I'm going to uh, finish up his shoulder plate uh, at home. Uh, I'm going to put some red highlights on his gun. Uh, I'm going to clean up his sword or his um, scabbard, and uh, I think I'll probably call it about done. I'll do his do his uh, I'll do his holster and I'll do his purity seals. Uh, but I think that's that's about it for me today. One last thing with mine, I just kind of noticed. Oh yeah. Even though he does look like he fell in Nevada Superman ice cream. Yeah. It also does kind of look not like uh, like a modern abstract art, but more like '80s pop art. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> he, yeah, he, he reminds me of that that painting of Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Well, I mean, I mean, yeah, '80s pop art used more like weirdly bright colors and very big globs i guess so. yeah well he's also it's, like that um that's easier to do on <laughs> miniatures you remember um you know there's that there huge trend of comic book art except mm. it was blown up really big it kind yeah. of makes me think of that too okay yeah yeah but they, <laughs> i have a gundam t-shirt looks kind of like that <laughs> yeah all right have hey, you seen me wear it that that one with the triptych or the probably colors, i so. don't remember <laughs> any rate um We've done some experimentation today. Uh, well, he's done some experimentation. Well, you also did with the dragon. I experimented on the last with episode. that dragon, so. So, so we both did experimentation in separate episodes that yeah. didn't quite turn out how we didn't, initially thought we would want it. Yeah, it didn't quite pan out. Although um, I think you liked the dragon more at the end. Yeah, that dragon. That dragon is going to come out all right uh, when I'm done with it, but it's not done right now. And at no point did we promise that we were going to complete anything. But you know, we've got a, we've got some colors. We've got three colors on stuff. You kind of get an idea of what they're up about. So, uh, anyway, so from here at the miniatures rundown, I'm CJ. That's Jeff. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you like what you just saw, why don't you hit that subscribe button and get updated about everything that we're working on here. And, while you're at it, you can check out our 1,000 Points or Bust playlist here at the Miniature Rundown on Game Twaddle. Thanks for watching.